Sometimes the most awesome heroes aren't born, they're made. Like when I got my shotgun leg. Well, at least some heroes know what to do with their new abilities. Like Genos, the cyborg sidekick of One Punch Man. And War Machine, best friend and understudy to Marvel's Iron Man. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. You ever think about how if there weren't so many villains blowing up fictional places, we wouldn't have so many awesome heroes? Genos was a happy 15-year-old living a quiet life, until his family and town were obliterated by a deranged cyborg. Thankfully, he was saved by a scientist, and Genos had one request. He wanted to be a powerful cyborg, too! Weird. I mean, I guess he really liked how the other cyborg violently murdered people. No, this was a means for revenge. Genos set out on a walkabout of justice. Though it wouldn't be long until he found his match in the one and only Mosquito Girl. This bug's making me pitch a tent, and uh, not to keep her out if you know what I mean. Ew. Luckily, another hero stepped in to save the day. Look out! It's the One Punch Man himself! Understandably impressed, Genos asked that Saitama take him on as a student. Caped Egghead here wasn't too excited about having a sidekick, but they eventually became buds. The two were quite the dynamic duo. Genos in particular rose to fame thanks to his adoring fans. Yeah, he's uh, pretty popular with the ladies, obviously. No such luck for Baldy McPunderson, though. To improve his hero work, Genos received numerous upgrades and repairs from Dr. Kusano, the same man who turned him into a cyborg in the first place. Mostly because he can't get out of a fight without something getting blasted off. He's got super durable armor over his entire body, and he can pop his limbs on and off like a friggin' lizard tail. Genos' limbs and body are incredibly strong, able to easily defend against powerful attacks. And the metal that makes up his body has been upgraded to protect against stuff like acid or heat, on top of them boosting his speed and overall power. He has multiple niche upgrades as well, such as an adhesive he can spray from his heels to immobilize foes. Talk about a sticky situation, right, Wiz? Well, he only needs to use the goop if he hasn't already noticed his opponents with his hyper sensors or weird cyborg eyes, which can zoom and enhance the most distant of evildoers. Dun dun! His eye can see in infrared or track image signatures. And it can shoot a blast of blinding light! Solar Flare! But there's far more weaponry across his body. Hidden blades, arm missiles, and electric shocks just to name a few. With his rocket boosters, he moves faster than almost anyone. And he can even fly! Well, sort of. You didn't even mention that his arms have freaking cannons in them! These are his incinerators, powerful blasters of fire of which he can control the size of the resulting explosions. And slapping both arms together makes the more powerful spiral incinerator blast. Then there's his ultra helix incinerator. Ah, if only I had two shotgun legs, I could put both of them together for an ultra leg blast! Uh, how would you even aim? Oh, I mean, it's not that hard. All you do is first you lift one leg like this, and then you just lift the other one. Oh, God, I fell on my keys. Anyway, the incredible energy of his Ultra Helix Incinerator comes directly from a power core housed in his chest, which powers most of his tech. But even with so much firepower, his physical attacks are awesome, too. Like the time he jet drive arrow kicked this elder centipede asshole so hard in the teeth. His incinerators are powerful enough to eradicate monsters, buildings, and even mountains. By using the smallest mountain in the world as a reference, the size of the damage and the fact that he vaporized that thing makes it a feat worth 66 kilotons of TNT. Not only is Geno strong, he's incredibly fast, moving faster than the human eye can see. He targeted and struck this city-destroying meteor rocketing through the sky. And those big boys are no joke. What big boys? Meteors! Those things killed the dinosaurs. Well, the fact that he was able to actually hit the big boy, not just target it, means he must have been moving 200 times faster than sound. Genos is badass enough that he can survive getting hit with his own incinerator cannons, on top of managing to withstand getting crushed by mosquitoes. Like, a shit ton of them. By measuring the size of that swarm, we deduced he's being crushed by 65 trillion mosquitoes, a combined weight of 358,000 tons. Please, God, let me go any way but that. While a skyscraper-sized bundle of bugs is impressive, Genos has also withstood a runaway train slamming into him. Luckily, it didn't make a dent on his power core. Without that, he wouldn't be able to do pretty much anything. Right, the power core is unfortunately the, ahem, core of his weakness as well. Oh, I was just about to do that one. Anyway, one time, Genos tried to use that core to self-destruct just to kill that annoying mosquito chick. 
Now, that might sound crazy to you, but have you ever had to deal with 65 trillion mosquitoes all at once? I'd do it. Regardless, Genos has shown time and time again that he's a fearsome hero to contend with. Sure, he hasn't found his family's killer yet, but he has found a new family with Saitama and friends, and he'll keep getting stronger and stronger. I will eliminate you. Stay right where you are. For some young boys like James Rhodes, joining the military seems the best way of making something of themselves. And Rhodey fit right in with his knack for machinery. He got top marks in the army and became a pilot, eventually becoming an expert in aviation engineering and military combat. Then on one fateful mission, his helicopter was shot down. Things didn't look good, but then Iron Man showed up. Turns out Rhodes wasn't the only one in trouble. Tony Stark was stranded without enough power for his suit and asked for his help. The two began an epic adventure that turned them into close friends. Rhodes stepped into the shoes of a superhero and became a man his younger self would be proud of. And being Tony's best bud had some perks, like taking over as Iron Man sometimes. Who wouldn't jump into that suit at the first chance? Next time, baby. And eventually, Tony offered Rhodes a super-powered suit of his very own. That's when regular old James Rhodes became War Machine! Oh yeah, it's like Iron Man, but with more guns! Rhodes had spent years trying to find his place in the world. As War Machine, he found a way to truly make something of himself. He already had tons of combat experience from the army and a bit of PTSD, but you know, you win some, you lose some. He can do way more anyway. He is a multi-talented badass. Tony has provided Rhodes with multiple War Machine suits throughout the years, each improving upon the one before it. Oh, and these babies are a beautiful piece of work. Just look at all those weapons! The suit is a specialized variation of the typical Iron Man armor, focusing more on firepower than tactics and maneuverability. Clearly, its alloy is composed of titanium and vibranium. Hey, like Captain America's shield. Which means it's both extremely durable and light enough to fly at incredible speeds. Very important given the computers, life support systems, and other devices housed within the unit. That's not even talking about what Rhodey fights with. His fine-tuned rides got repulsor rays and a unit beam in the chest. And did I mention guns, guns, and more guns? Get a look at that! Machine guns, Gatling guns, laser guns, flamethrowers, the works! The suit can generate electromagnetic pulses, particle beams, and even drain energy from opponents. Ah, oh, this baby's so sweet, I felt inspired to upgrade some of my own arsenal, if you know what I mean. I don't think I want to. I got a new gun! It, uh, it was white when I bought it, but I accidentally washed it with my hat. So obviously, I'm pretty hyped about the guns, but the armor has a lot of really cool other things too. His most up-to-date suit includes incredible chameleon systems that allow him to not only become invisible, but intangible, bypassing scanners and phasing through walls. You know, I could really use that the uh, next time you try to stab me with a trident! It was one time! And in the most dire of circumstances, War Machine has a self-destruct function he can call upon to make sure his tech doesn't fall into the wrong hands. I mean, this work of art can scan for things like weird light and electromagnetic signals. But even if Rhodey doesn't see it coming, he can handle the craziest of attacks. Not only has he been thrown through a mountain with enough force to cause an earthquake, he survived getting nuked! You see the size of that crater? Compared to War Machine himself, this looks like the explosion was over two and a half megatons of TNT. And the suit is fast enough to fly into orbit and out into space. Take that, Elon Musk! No, but please send me one of your flamethrowers. Sorry, not a flamethrower. <laughs> I see you. Given how it only takes War Machine about 10 seconds to exit the planet's orbit and measuring the distance he's traveled, this puts him at flying speeds over Mach 620. And while he may be speedy, Rhodey's also strong enough for his hits to be the first and last. He's lifted cars, thrown tanks, and tossed a dude so hard he destroyed a spaceship. Not to mention the fact that Tony created the War Machine suit to be on par with his own Iron Man suits. And remember, Rhodey even acted as Iron Man for a while, so plenty of what Tony can do, he can do too, including the time Tony blew up a massive rock the size of Manhattan. Of course, everything he's experienced as a superhero and in the army hasn't exactly been the best for his mental state, which has unfortunately left him with pretty drastic cases of PTSD and survivor's guilt, even sometimes feeling he's not worthy of the high-tech armor he wears. But he'll push past it to rescue his friends as well as the rest of mankind. Time and time again, Rhodey's proven that Tony isn't the only armored Avenger. Also, did I mention the guns?
All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, we'll tell you about him so you don't end up looking like one bunch man. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Hims. Hey guys, there's a company out there to help you look your best every day. Hims. Did you know that 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35? I've done research on this myself and well, it's true and terrifying. But Hims can help. If your hairline is starting to run for the scalp, the best way to keep it where it belongs is to do something about it while you still can. Grab this new year by the follicles. Here's to a year of personal growth with Hims prescription solutions backed by science. And if you're as shy as Wiz here, it's perfect for you. Yes, Hims knows some conversations are easier to have online than off. So with them, you can connect to a real doctor online. And should you be prescribed, it's shipped right to your front door. Dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, get started with your first month free. Go to 4 slash death battle. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash death battle. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Huh? <sighs> Never a day to myself, huh? Hey there! Destruction of property is a serious offense, young man. One more of you, huh? Come for vengeance? I'll turn you to scrap! He ran off. That suit was ugly anyway. Ugly! This is my Sunday best! Is G no more? J 
Genos was certainly a serious threat in the field of battle, however, Rhodes held a solid advantage in many different aspects. He's had years of training in the military, even before becoming a superhero, which means he's been doing this for way longer. Stratagems aside, let's compare their power output. At his best, Genos had kicked the Elder Centipede backward, which was freaking huge. According to an interview with a One Punch Man manga illustrator, Elder Centipede's body measures 15 meters wide. With that and scaling to its surroundings, we determined its full size to be over 700 meters long. The force to knock aside something this large would have to be over 15 megatons of TNT. But War Machine's got the edge over that. Remember the giant rock that was the size of Manhattan? Taking the square footage of Manhattan and the height of the rock, we found that the energy it would take to shatter a rock of this size comes out to over 280 teratons of TNT. Way more than Genos knocking around the big bug. War Machine's orbit-breaking flying speed proves he's a lot quicker, too. But even if he could get a hit in, Genos had no way to counter Rhodey's energy draining tech and ghost chameleon mode. Genos was certainly a powerful contender, but War Machine's overwhelming firepower and high-tech abilities were just too much for the teenage cyborg. Yeah, War Machine was on the road to victory. The winner is War Machine. Thank you for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can find it linked in the description below. Uh, and you can check out a link to the Death Battle card and dice game.